Good morning, everyone. It's Joker, and today we are back for everyone's favorite video, How to Score Higher in Heroes Jubilee. Now, I always do this for everyone. I don't want to hold back and keep people from getting top rewards. This is a video to help people out as much as possible, but I do have to put the disclaimer in that your results may vary. Because I have a very good Whaley box, because I have every single unit with multiple dupes, your traits, your damage numbers, your defenses, your everything will look different than what mine do. So just please keep that in mind. I am here to show you the overall strategy of each team. How you approach it with your own personal units is up to you, but this is just to give you an idea of how to beat each stage, and then you can work that as you will. Also, this is going to be a very long video, like 30 something minutes long, and I'm going to put timestamps in the description. If you want to skip to a particular fight, I will put that in there for you. Some fights have multiple, uh, multiple team variations that I show, so I will just put on like normal battle 1, 2, and 3, and then boss battles uh, 2 and 3. I'm not going to do EX because that's just a harder 3, and you can use the same strategy for boss battles because it's just Milim. She just hits harder. But without further ado, with uh, that information out of the way, let us jump in to the video. Alright guys, so we are in stage one. We are running Beretta up front, Trainee and Earth Millum, and in the back is Wind Millum and Space Rimuru for the boosts. So turn one here, we have four blue and two orange. We're going to use Earth Millum to get a whole six hand of blues, and then we're going to spread out the damage between all three of the bats, the idea is that you're looking to overkill with Earth Millum and Trainee. The perfect, you want to kill on turn three, and the perfect way you want to do this is have Trainee single target one of them and kill, and then Earth Millum will do the AoE against the remaining two on turn three with full boost is the perfect turn. Whether that works for you or not is debatable, but this is what needs to happen if you want to score maximum points. So we have spread the damage out between the bats. We have an Orc of Disaster meter right here. We have one outlying blue card. So we do actually have to end up orb changing here with Beretta first. And then we can get the Orc of Disaster. Because we want to have another six card sound because we want to have alts for both Trainee and Melon. So let's go ahead. Come on. Come on, Joker. This is this is recording from earlier, so I'm Getting frustrated with my speed. <laughs> okay, full six card send. This will be enough to grant us everyone's alts to be realistic. So we're going to send three. We're going to spread the damage out again. Get them as close to death as possible. They are really tanky on turn two because they have their defensive boost right here. So we have run turn two. They have to scream at us some more. And now we have all three alts, but we only need two, because you're looking for weakness damage overkill, and Beretta does not count for that since she is not type advantage. So it's safe to take Beretta out here for Rimuru, so we can go ahead and use his attack boost on both Trainee and Milim. And now, now we can use the Orc of Disaster to boost our points back up, so we have enough to use Wind Millum's alt boost as well. So now here, we're going to work... Let's see, we'll probably send the one Millum card since she hits harder. Yep, there we go. And then we will single target with Trainee to kill that one bat, and then we will AoE to kill the other two bats. And that is how... Oh, my flex day is tomorrow. That is how you will get the best possible score on this turn. So we single targeted one, it's dead. We just AoE'd the two, and they are dead. And now our final score that we end up is at 34-2. Could be higher, but could be worse. That's a strategy. Let's move on to battle two. Okay, we are moving on to stage two with the water team. So as you can see here, we will pause. Uh, come on, pause. There we go. So we're running Soe. Alice and Water Rimuru up front, and then we've got Space Rimuru and Wind Millum in the back, the mainstays for attacking, attack boosting. So the strategy here also remains about the same as 
the first battle where you're looking to kill on turn three and you're looking to either AoE and kill, or actually you're looking to single target with either Soe or Alice on one of the dragons and then AoE with Rimuru on the other two. Or if you have the gear and you have the dupes, you may be able to kill one of the dragons turn one with the full six card send and then you're looking to single target with both Alice and Soe. And I believe this run, we work it out in a way that we can single target both. I don't think the first dragon dies turn one, but we get him incredibly, incredibly low. So we do end up killing him on turn two. So let's take a look. Pretty sure this is the one. And... Yes, yes, yes. Come on. Come on. Come on. There we go. Yep. 7,000. He is a nut tap of health away. Which is fine, because we can definitely kill him next turn. And this is a pretty good hand right here. So we're going to use Alice's orb change into greens from those blues. We'll use the orb to change all of the greens into oranges. And we have plenty of cards to get both Alice and Soe's ultimate right here. So now we've got to make sure that we are actually going to kill the middle dragon, which is why we're redoing this entire hand. Because I want him gone. Because I want to single target each dragon and kill them individually now because that is that is the way the hand turned out i'll have another clip in here where we use the aoe but this is the single target turn so we'll go ahead and run this they do attack debuff on turn two and it, we got incredibly lucky that they both decided to attack the unit that we're not going to use <laughs> they both hit water rimuru which freed up both alice and soe from taking any of the debuff so right here we have 120 points we have enough to boost with both Wind Millum and Space Rimuru. So let's get Rimuru in here. Here we go. And then we're going to send one card of each Soe on each dragon just to get them, you know, even closer to death. And then we'll send one Alice alt and we'll send one Soe alt and we'll call this stage good. It doesn't really matter in what order you go. I would just send the normals against whoever has a list, like higher amount of health or spread it out if they're relatively even. So Soe, 35-3, he's 6-star with 6-star gear. Alice is level 80 with 5-star gear, 25, definitely not as high, but still, single target damage looks very good for the overkill. Our final score is 36-3, again, could be higher, but could be, could be a lot worse. So that's the strategy for the single targets. Let's put another clip on here with the single target and AoE kill now. Okay. Here is the second round of this stage where you can AoE and single target on turn three. So it's going to follow the same pattern. You're going to spread the damage out just a little bit more, though. But the, 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 play, the game plan is the same. Four greens, two oranges. You use Soe or someone else to orb change into a full hand of greens. So we'll go ahead and do this, that, that, that. And then I believe we leave him alive and we start focusing on the other two dragons instead. That way we can try and get some additional overkill on this leftover dragon. That way he doesn't die. He is the one that gives everyone guard though, which is the reason why they take so little damage on turn two. If you manage to kill him turn one, then they don't have guard. They take a whole lot more damage. It's a lot easier to score. But here again, we have Alice to change that one blue into a green. And then we have the orc to change all of those greens into oranges, which is only two of them. But as you can see, we have two and three, so we have enough for a Soe alt and a Rimuru alt this time. So now we're going to pick and choose our targets. So we're going to spread the damage between the left dragon and the right dragon. Or salamander, whatever the hell you want to call them, sorry. I'm going to call them dragons. Sue me. <laughs> Alright. So, we have the alts now, but now we got to remember that we're gonna they're going to debuff someone. And they debuff my AoE. <laughs> Twice. Which doesn't really matter. It, it's only one debuff, really. But I really wish they'd hit Alice. We could have gotten a lot more damage on Rimuru here. But we still have maximum points. We can still buff with Rimuru and buff with Melum. That's the game plan. And then what we're going to do is we're going to spread those last two Soe cards out between the other two dragons that still have a lot of HP. And then we're going to single target alt the dragon in the middle for the overkill. And then we'll have Rimuru clean up the other two dragons with his AoE alt. So in case you don't get lucky with, you know, your single target kills from the first clip, you can do the AoE clip here. 
either way will work. One, the single target will probably get you a higher score just because of the overkill, but if it's not the hand that you're given, then you gotta run with it. This is just another example of what to do here. Um, yeah, a little bit lower than last time, but it is what it is. That's the strategy for stage two. Let's move on to stage three now. Okay, moving on to stage three, we're gonna have two strategies here. One that I did um, earlier in the day, and then another one that someone told me to use instead, which actually got my score up a little higher. But we'll first take a look at the first uh, the first team running my Dark Rimuru, who <laughs> uh, I'd have to clip it out, but I did some I did pity the Dark Banner, and we got incredibly lucky. So we'll go on that later. But so for here, we have four orange and two blue. And the best way to do this is that if your Beretta has a high skill orb change level, we could change those two blues into oranges, and because we're running my protection strategy meter, which if you haven't watched that video, it went out earlier today on how to get so much protection meter turn one, then we can get a full orc turn two. So let's go ahead and do that now. We'll change with Beretta here. There we go. And then... Because, again, you're looking for weakness damage on all three of these stages, you want to attack as much as possible with type advantage characters. So sending the Soe cards first would not really do much for you as far as your score is concerned. That's why we're sending Rimuru and then Beretta first, and Soe can be last. Really, he's going to die in like the first two or three hits, realistically. But we need to send all six, that way we can get a full Orc of Disaster meter. And yeah, there you go. Two two cards. Two cards instead. Alright. So the ideal second turn that you are looking for is at least at least a four or five card send that enables you to kill both of these ants in one turn. So right here we are going to have to use Beretta's orb change again. That way we can get five cards here. We'll use the orc. Thankfully it didn't change Soe's card, so we don't have to really worry about that. Rimuru is my hardest hitter, though, so we're going to make sure that the three attacks kill this ant, which, there we go, and then with the 180% attack boost, or 150, this ant dies as well. So now we're moving into stage three, or turn three, with a Beretta alt and a Rimuru alt, and if you cannot see a pattern as to how these stages are going, you can either single target and then AoE, or just AoE. If you don't have the single target alt, you can might as well just AoE with Dark Rimu. If you don't have Dark Rimu, you can use the battle unit Shion. She has an AoE. I'm using Rimu because he has that cheap crit, and I generally, because if I have to orb change, I'm not going to have enough points for the double boost from Rimu and Milim. So having the guaranteed crit on Dark Rimu makes up for lacking one of those big buffs, and it's really cheap. It's like 15 points, so you don't need much. Um, that's exactly what we're going to do here, though. So we're going to swap out Soe for Wind Millum after we use the crit boost on our Dark Rimuru. And then again, the idea is to lower one ant down. They, they don't have a lot of health. So lower one ant down with one attack from Beretta with type advantage, therefore we get the points. And then single target and nuke it into the ground. And then we will send the AoE with Rimuru against the two last remaining ants, 23,000, 28,000. And that will get us a very decent score right here. But there is a way to score just a tiny bit higher if you get a little bit luckier. And so let's take a look at that strategy for the stage now. Okay, so here is the other strategy that I have been told. It can work, but it requires quite a bit of RNG. So we're running Dark Veldora now, and we're running three single target nukers along with the double buff at the back. And the idea is, is that you can orb change turn one with Beretta, get a whole hand, uh, a whole hand of oranges, get a full Veldora meter, and then turn two, you can get a full protection hand of blues, maybe, with, you know, Wind Millum's orb change. So we're gonna do the orb change here. 
And then we're going to send all of the cards here. The idea is that we want to use Veldora twice to get that extra 20% boost to the alt, and then bring in Windmill and Space Premier to double buff us again. And we're running three single targets because we're going to swap out one of them, whoever doesn't have, or whoever is the, you know, the weaker, and that is not the hand that we want to see. So I'm going to pretend that we have a whole hand of, I, you know what, I don't even care. I don't even care. We're going to run turns in here. And we'll just do what we have to, so let's just send this. I've literally been here for like an hour trying to get the perfect RNG to show you guys, and it's not happening. And I'm getting... Frankly, I'm just tired. It's almost midnight. <laughs> so, obviously we're not going to hit the turn bonus. We're not even going to kill a stupid ant. Alright, cool. Great. Um... Let's, yeah, let's just get it with you. Alright, cool. Whatever. The idea is, is that you will have two Veldora protection meters, boosting your ult by 20%. So on this turn, you would have enough to use the double buff with Rimuru and Veldora. So we're going to take out Beretta, because she's going to hit weaker than Diablo and Melum. So we'll boost there, and then we'll bring in Windmillum, and we'll boost here, and then we'll use Dark Melum's crit boost, I guess, just for funsies. So now what we can do is we can just go ahead and kill one of these, and then we can single target all of the other two, and apparently that is supposed to get you a higher score. Whether that actually happens or not is, again, up to RNG, because you would want a perfect hand turn one and turn two, so you could have... If you get a full six hand of protection on turn two, you can get... Or a full six hand of blues, you can get another protection gauge. 33, we were way past the turn limit. That is the strategy. Um, I think I've only ever gotten it once, and of course it wasn't when I was goddamn recording. So... Turn one, full hand of orange. Turn two, full hand of blue. That means you have two Veldoras to pop on turn three. You have enough points to use the boost and everything, and then you can kill one ant and then single target all the other two ants. I'm sorry I could not show you that here, but honestly that takes some serious RNG and I have no more patience for it. So let's move on to the boss fights. Okay, so boss battle two against Space Millum. This is the team that we're going to use Wind Veldora for the extra points and the point cap and the alt boost, Rimuru for the attack boost, Dark Millum for the nuke, Beretta for the orb change, Phobio for his really cheap crit resistance down because it mixes well with Millum having giving herself a crit rate up. In the event that we do crit we will do more damage. And then Wind Millum for the additional alt boost that stacks with Veldora. So let's go ahead and let's skip ahead until we actually get to the fight, because we can do that, because this is recorded. Okay, here we go. So, we always get the same hand. We get three greens, two oranges, and one blue. Pretty pretty basic, pretty simple. Um, based on whatever team you're running, you can definitely do what you can with this as far as orb changing. For this team, I'm going to just leave it for now and send the greens, in the event that we get a whole hand of oranges and blues next turn, and we can maybe orb change with Beretta and get an alt. So, and that is exactly what happens, thank lord. We have one blue and five oranges, so we will make use of Beretta here. We will orb change. We'll have a full six card send. <clears throat> However, we're going to bring in Windmillum for her trait, which is on turn three, you get an additional um, protection meter. And so does Space Rimuru. So you'll see... After we use all these oranges, we're at like a protection meter and a and a bit, right? But starting next turn after she's done attacking us, this little meter will jump up to about like a third full instead of like a like a sixth or something like that, whatever that is. It will increase. So we'll take use of that in order to, you know, get as much Veldora boost as we can. Stage one, she doesn't do a lot of damage, but you'll see, yeah, now that we've 
add it up a little bit more. We're a quarter, maybe a third. Yeah, we're like a third more. Which is good, because the more protection the better. So we'll go ahead and use Veldora here just to get the extra skill points and raise our cap up. We're not going to alt here, because we don't have enough points to do everything. We're going to burn the greens. I could have probably moved Dark Millum out and made room for that other green. We would have had a maximum points there, but it doesn't really doesn't really matter here. What we're going to do here, though, is we're going to swap out Rimuru for Breda. That way we get that extra blue orb come in. And with that extra blue, we should be able to get another protection gauge if we orb change with Millum here. If we're using points, but we're fine because we're going to make them all back from Veldora. So... Um, here I was really praying that these four blues didn't kill, because Millen does have a very decently high attack stat, because she's all geared out, and we get very, very close. Very, very close. Gonna alt us again. We do have enough for another Veldora prote or protection meter, though, which is good, because that's now 20% extra boost. We're gonna get another 30 points, so we're looking pretty good here, as far as turn 5, because turn 5 is where you want to kill Millen. Anything past that, and you start losing the um, eh, turn bonus points. So right here, we're going to use Windmillum's boost. We're going to bring in Space Rimuru for his attack boost. Eventually, here we go. Okay. So Space Rimuru's boost. And then we're going to bring Phobio in for his crit resistance down. In the event that we do crit, we will do more damage. And then we'll pop... Dark Millum's crit rate up by 15% as well. And it, uh, we're set up right here for doing points. I don't want to send any other card because all these cards have an attack boost on it and I'm pretty sure they would kill her. So we're just going to nuke. We're going to nuke. We, If we got her health a little lower, we, we could score a bit higher, but I'm pretty sure they would have killed. And we do 36,000 with Pierce. No crit though, so tell me the odds of that. And our score ends up being... 79.5. Definitely not a bad score by any means. I think my maximum is like 82 or something, so we're not that far off. Um, but definitely stage 2, you're going to see some higher numbers in the other stages. The dark team does work. Let's move on to a different team now on stage 2 that could give you similar or better results depending. Okay, so... We're going to run boss battle 2 again, but this time we're going to use a little bit of a newer team, all things considered. We're going to bring Chloe as the protector, and we're going to have Gazel as the nuker now. So Chloe's going to give us that 40, well the 38% in my case, but 40% of it's maxed out, alt boost. We'll have Gazel with his boost, we'll have Leon with his light boost, and then we'll have Millen with her crit boost. And we'll see how this plays out. I believe everything works out for me, but let's uh, let's take a looky look. And okay. So here, because we have Hanada, we're going to again send the greens in the event that we get a very good hand next turn with oranges, and we can just use Hanada and have a perfect six card send again, which we don't really get. We get three blues, three oranges. We have enough points, though, where we can bring in Leon, though, and we'll use his one blue to one orange, and then we can use Hinata on top of that, and we'll have, you know, a five-card send. Is it the best use of points? Meh, not really, but it ensures that we get a Gazel ult. So that's the most important thing out of this whole, this whole plan. since he is our main nuker, and now we just have to build up points. So I believe we get the Chloe Gauge next turn because I have Space Rimuru attached to someone for the protection boost on turn three. And do 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 do. Yes, I do, okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to just spend the next two turns building up points. So we're gonna get Gazel out that way we can bring in that additional green card. We're going to use these four right now. We're going to save Chloe just in case we need to orb change next turn. Because her ult boost is for three turns. But just in case we get a whole hand of nerfed oranges, I'd rather change those then than do nothing with them now. Which doesn't really work out again. The game wants to give us a crap ton of blues. It is what it is. 
we'll go ahead and send it anyways. We're on turn four now, but Gazel does have his ult. I don't think we're going to have enough points to triple boost or everything. This is the hand that I wanted to see last turn, was a whole bunch of oranges. And greens, so highly unfortunate <laughs> that this happened here. But let's go ahead and let's bring Gazel back in. So we won't have enough points to do much boosting here. So we'll have the Chloe, uh, we'll have the 38% from Chloe. And then I believe we just used Leon's boost and one of Gazel's boost. So definitely not the perfect turn. But again, this is just a strategy guide. It's not me trying to show off how, to, how I score. It's just to help you understand the strategy behind it. That way you can take it as you will. Uh, we send we don't send the extra card because that would have killed probably here if she didn't guard. Uh, another hit would have killed. And then we nuke with Gazel for 28. Definitely not the highest. I think I've done like 40k with them or something. With everything on a perfect turn. So 75k. I mean, it is lower than last time. It's still relatively acceptable. But again, we can definitely do better. You can definitely get some much better luck with uh, the orbs and having a whole bunch of greens that can be changed on turn three and that gives you a whole much better pool to work with as far as buffs go. But that is the overall strategy for that team. So let's try one more team before we end this video because it's getting quite long. Okay, this is the final part of the video. We're going to go into boss battle three now because we're going to use a different team for one, and two, I need to improve my score in boss battle three. So, we're bringing Charybdis now as the protector. Gazel is still going to be the nuker. Wind Milum for the boost, Valentine for the orb change, Leon for the boost, Milum for the boost. So, we're looking for big daddy damage numbers here. We are looking for like 180 points worth of boosts. <laughs> In the perfect world, that's what we're going to get here. So let's go ahead and figure out, because I totally forget, because this was recorded hours ago, and it's been a long day. It's been a long day of recording. I'm kind of burned out. I kind of want to go take a shower and go to bed. <laughs> but I wanted to get this video out to you guys, or at least get it recorded that way and get it to you guys tomorrow. Uh, we still have like 10 days left in Jubilee, so this will help out a lot of people. As long as you don't push me out of top 10 or top 0.1%, I really don't care how you... I really don't care what my placement is. Okay, so, turn one. We are going to use Valentine's Orb Change right here, so we can get a five hand of green. Now, we're going to assume that in the next couple turns, we will get a lot of greens. That way we can use Charybdis multiple times and just feed off of all the green energy that Charybdis gives us because he is a broken mother. His 150% to green orbs is ridiculous, which is why he is still one of, if not the best protector for most, uh, most events, really, unless they debuff green. And then in that case, you bring him anyways, and then you're not debuffed anymore, essentially. <laughs> all right, so this turn didn't look that good. What do we got? We have a bunch of Gazel cards. We might as well just go ahead and send those. And we'll get them closer to an alt. This is boss battle 3, so we are looking a little bit lower on damage numbers and a little bit higher on damage taken. Um, that was a lot of Valentine cards. Yeah, that was a lot of Valentine cards. Okay. So, the plan that I do here, I believe, is I swap out Gazel with the intent of bringing him back in for Valentine. Oh, no. Oh. No, yeah, I do that. Okay, so... Yes, I swap Gazel out. Swap Gazel out. Come on. Come on, Joker. Think. Think hard. Think very, very hard. There we go. Gazel's out. Leon's in for Valentine. We're going to burn the one Leon card that's blue. We're gonna get another blue next turn. That's fine, really. We have Charybdis built up. We can use it now, we can use it next turn. It really doesn't matter all that much. So we've got five cards here of green, which are now going to be, after this Charybdis, is going to be boosted beyond belief. We're gonna bring Gazel back in for Leon since he has the most cards because we need an alt for him. 
Here we go, we pop Charybdis. And now we're going to send these five, and we're going to, one, max out our points, and two, have another Charybdis meter. So we'll be looking pretty good right now. And I believe, yeah, we get a whole bunch of Gazzle cards. <laughs> Makes life really, really easy for us to do right here. So what are we going to do? We are on turn five, we are on the kill turn, we have 140 points, so definitely... Not as much as I would like to use, but we're going to use the crit boost, we're going to use the alt boost, and we're going to use Gazel's boosts. We have to forego the Leon boost here because we just don't have the points for it. So I thought about it and I was like, no, the math doesn't add up. So we're just going to do this. In a perfect world, we would have like 180 something points and we could use everything. Didn't work out right here. We didn't get enough greens to feed off of. But we're going to launch the alt here just to lower her health even more. Send the three Gazel cards and pray that he doesn't kill. Alright, we get her very, very close though. It was a very good run right here. And then we crit 31k. And the result is... 60k. Which is... A new high score. By... Mm, almost 2,000 points. Almost 1,000 points. Yeah? 70, 70... Oh, almost 2,000 points, really. So definitely moving up in the world, definitely getting our score a little higher. This strategy does work if you don't have the other two teams that I use. This is Boss Battle 3 as well. The strategy for the EX Millum, essentially the same. She just does a lot more damage to you. <laughs> and she has, a, she has a lot higher defense, so killing is a little bit more difficult. But you can apply these strategies and your teams to whatever you need to do. Hopefully you found this video helpful for getting a higher score. That's what I'm here for, is I want everyone to do well. I don't want to be greedy and save all these strategies for myself. I want the community as a whole to enjoy this event and do as well as they possibly can. So, if you've made it this far, you enjoyed the video, drop a like, drop a sub if you haven't done that already. Leave me a comment saying if this worked for you or if it didn't work for you or if you absolutely hate my guts because you have not the teams that you can use to score highly in this event. Let me know, but for now, take it easy guys, and I'll see you later.